Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> good, afternoon. good to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you can see me here. Yeah, I can. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, it's almost uh, just a minute to 10 o'clock. How's everything going? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> good. I'm trying to adjust to the light yeah, yeah. here. It's okay. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -mm. I need to charge and I need to adjust to the light. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll just hold it this way, yeah. Okay, uh, whenever everyone is ready, I believe we will just uh, proceed. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. This is okay, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Yomi Ola. I hope you can all hear me. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's good to have that feedback. Uh, my name is Yomi Ola. I teach at Spelman College here in Atlanta. And I have been uh, chosen to be the chair for this panel. It's a panel uh, that celebrates the life work and uh, legacy of Mr. Josie Ajiboye. Ajiboye is a living legend in the firmament of accomplished contemporary artists in Nigeria. Uh, Ajiboye moved from Erimokwe in Ekiti in the, 19, in the late 1950s to Lagos. And since then, he has firmly implanted himself in the Lagos cultural life. He worked as a cartoonist at the Daily Times for several years. Many of us who practiced at the Daily Times 
uh, were fortunate to uh, walk and relate with Ajiboye. Uh, Ajiboye is a painter, a uh, very prolific painter. He exhibited, he had several solo exhibitions and several group exhibitions. And uh, he is still practicing today, even on the social media. Uh, it is difficult to recall or to talk about cartooning in Nigeria without mentioning Ajiboye. But rather than me going on talking about Ajiboye, since we have three presenters, we will look at several facets of Ajiboye's work. I will just reduce my, I will just limit my own comments at this point and uh, give a lay of the land, how we will proceed. We have one and a half hours and uh, three presenters would uh, make their presentation and that will be followed by questions. And at the end of the day, as I understand it, we would uh, hear from Josie Ajiboye. Josie Ajiboye will be the respondent and it will wrap up uh, our events. Uh, so I will just do a brief introduction of the three presenters and they will take turns to present. And after their presentations, we will get uh, every uh, members of the audience would get the opportunity to ask questions. So please, after each presenter, I will just suggest we hold our questions until all the presenters have presented. So not necessarily in this order, these are the presenters. Uh, Kunle Filani from the Federal College of Education, Lagos, will be presenting on Josie Ajiboye, a realist cartoonist and a surreal painter. Uh, that will be followed by Stephen Folaromi from Rhodes University, whose presentation will be on Josie Ajiboye's women, family, advocacy, and reference. Uh, and the last presenter, the third presentation, I should say, will be a joint presentation by Adedola Olayinka Adeyemi and Afiz Babatunde Shinyobola, both from Olabisi Onobanjo University. Uh, please note that uh, since uh, the abstracts were presented or were submitted. Uh, the presenters could have modified their presentation in some ways. So please just take that into consideration. And uh, depending on how the organizers have arranged the schedule of presentations, I will just, without much ado, ask the first presenter to please proceed. I will yield the screen and uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, may we know who is presenting first, please? Uh, that's what I just said. I said, I don't know the order of presentation. So whoever wants to go first, please just okay. jump in. Okay. Whoever I think, the order... I, I think yes. I'm ready. Oh, please, <laughs> you could go ahead then, please. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, um, uh, Yomi. It's yeah. nice to see your face again. Nice yeah. to see your face too. Uh, thank you very much. Um, let me just go straight to the theme talks about tuning in Nigeria, critical perspective, critical perspectives to see Ajiboye. A sub theme, which is the title of what I'm presenting, is you see Ajiboye, a realist cartoonist 
and a surreal painter. In my introductory statement, I tried to talk about Jose Ajiboye as a veteran artist uh, who trained, you know, who was trained essentially by the Sudanese interior mission in the late 50s and early 60s, and eventually went to Yaba, the present day Yaba College of Technology to take an, uh, to take an advanced diploma, which is equivalent to our higher national diploma today. Um, as a veteran artist, he delved into different aspects of the art. As a, he was a cartoonist, a painter, a graphic designer, and a designer, and more so. However, his um, you know, robust creativity flowered mainly in two major areas, uh, cartooning as well as paintings. Um, I classified these cartoons to belong to a stylistic uh, realm of realism, which was taken you know, as an art movement in a particular time in art history. I also classified these paintings under surrealism, which was also a style you know, in art historical studies. Um, the interesting thing is that both styles are embedded in naturalistic rendition of images. And um, while the realism as an art movement rejected imaginative idealization in favor of observation of um, outward appearances, the surrealism as an art style celebrated imaginative movements and disrupts the order of uh, visuality in nature. I will expand on those when I get there. My thesis, you know, uh, in this presentation is to highlight the distinctive characteristics of the major two art forms, that is cartooning and painting, in order to distinguish the stylistic trends of his own, that is Jose Ajibo's uh, oeuvre. It is therefore an exposition of Jose Ajibo's visions of reality in cartooning and his expanded visuality into the world of imagination in painting. The interesting thing is that the two, however, are reconciled by the naturalistic uh, renditions that he uses to achieve the two distinct styles. One of the early artists who projected, uh, Ajibo, you know, is one of the early artists who projected uh, naturalism as an art style in Nigeria, minding the fact that he became an artist um, since, um, in the, in, the, in the 50s. So, and he was able to dispel the unfortunate uh, perception of the West that the Africans were not able to do naturalistic drawings. So, so it has its own political meaning and it has its own artistic um, opinion. Now, um, I will go to the body of the presentation itself. Uh, which are under two major areas, Ajibwe as a cartoonist. I believe that um, we all know that cartoons, you know, are drawings that are intended to satirize. You know, sometimes they could come in caricatures. Uh, they are humorous political um, drawings, and you could have a strip, you know, to you, you could take a particular theme and exploit using cartoon scripts over the time. Now we, are, we even have animated cartoons. But um, the period that Jibori excelled in cartooning was a period where uh, drawing was pervasive and he was able to use his cartoon strips to, that ran for decades, mostly in the Daily Times uh, paper, you know, um, especially in Sunday Times where he had Jose Jibori on Sunday. Uh, before then, before the Daily Times um, employment, he had, you know, stayed with the Sudan mission, which later became the ECOWAS. I mean, the ECOWAS, you know, evangelical mission. And he was cartooning for them for almost 10 years, you know, very popular uh, cartoons um, outlets like the Challenge that ran all over Africa and West Africa and the other outlets, but he became more known, better recognized when he joined the Daily Times of Nigeria because the readership was very expanded. It expanded even up to West Africa. 
uh, and they come in hundreds of thousands um, in production daily. So what Jose Ajibo did was to, to, to craft excellently satirical social political cartoons over the years. Uh, oftentimes, it, it uses dominant one or two central images, you know, while there could be background images that we uh, illustrate his intentions. He, uh, he accompanied, I mean, those um, images were usually accompanied by witty, very funny, and philosophical captions. Some talked about it as using pun, parodies, proverbial um, tales, and parables to drive home his um, meaning and content. Uh, what he did actually was to critique modernity, critique the present moment where he was, was working. Whether it was civilian or military regime, he was able to use um, an, the cartoon as an expressive content, you know, to, to comment, to make social commentary on the happenings in Nigeria. Uh, very fortunate for him. Fortunate for him, he wasn't, um, you know, so that cartoonist that we that will create an honest problem for himself because his uh, radicalism was suppressed. You know, however, he, dr he drove home very wonderful points, and the people of Nigeria recognized that. Um, his images, you know, are familiar because they were supposed to be for common people and the oppressed. You see the middlemen oppressing common people. He rendered them in naturalistic drawings, you know, with accurate, unembellished, and unembellished depictions of contemporary scenes. All these characteristics are actually what the realist that, you know, we said is a realist cartoonist, what the realists of the middle 19th century, you know, did in France when they advocated, you know, for a change from um, the pervasive um, naturalistic tendencies and the artificiality of classism and romanticism. And so they took the realism as an art that studied the exact thing that was happening in society, the, 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 the problems, you know, associated with the people, especially the, the downtrodden. And that was what Jose uh, did in his cartoons. Um, he equally used common man as a statistic subject. You know, you could see people that have been oppressed and even themes, he used some as theme. He stayed in the age that he lived, that he lives as an artist, you know? Therefore, he was recording what was contemporaneous. He critiqued contemporary, the modernity of his time. Um, and that is exactly what the realists of the period did. The, their drawings were simple, illustrative of the situations. They didn't you know, condition their drawings to, to adorn it or do anything. And so um, Ajiboye you know, was able to achieve that uh, realist tendencies in his, cartoon, in, in his cartoons, and he was able to make a mark up to today. The second area is the is Ajibuye as a creative and imaginative painter. You know, we said he's, um, uh, he's a surreal painter. Now, um, the, the veteran, you know, having done a lot of cartoons, you know, probably using some studies, and you know, especially using his imagination, he felt more at home, even in painting, you know. Um, and he has started exhibiting since 1977, his paintings. That's quite a long time. And um, it means that he's quite veritable and veteran in that profession also. Um, he used his skill to lure the viewers into a kind of imaginative world of make-believe. There is an, a kind of exuberant reality he created by his paintings. He explored cultural aesthetics to craft his art of painting. That is, he was using you know, icons from, from the society, you know, as part of his images, you know, even though they were arranged in, in the surreal, in the surreal manner, which I will maybe mention later. He explored the, I mean, his depictions, you know, were of ordinary objects, you know, animals, human beings, you know, and he will arrange them in a witty and uh, thought-provoking context. In fact, that's the essence of surrealism, arranging things, assemblages, you know, in a way that it creates another dimension in visuality. 
Um, so th this seems to be an artificial nationalism that is based on credulous assumptions. You know, people are tempted to, to believe that, ah, you know, like you see a parrot standing on the Bible, a yekuto, you know, and it's a pun in terms of context. Um, it's, uh, it has a, his paintings had a pervasive mythical and mystical aura when you look at it, in spite of the fact that they are couched in nationalism. Um, and these are in tandem with what surrealists did, you know, in the early, in the middle 20th, 20th century. Artists like um, Salvador Dali, we all know him, uh, and Marx and Ren Magritte, the Belgian, you know, who all rejected the romanticism of their period and explored better, I mean, and took forward the potentials of uh, imagination. Um, they are the creative potentials of the unconscious mind and rational juxtaposition of images were actually what they triumphed in. And in conclusion, uh, I will just note that uh, with the quality of work that Dusajwe had produced in the last 60 or 60 or 70 years thereabout, uh, he had placed himself in a very vintage position in Nigerian contemporary history artistry. Uh, he, he became a, a patriarch of a real family of artists where the wife and the four children, you know, became artists the, the, and very well educated. You know, um, his attainment in life is quite impressive. He had been rewarded by many awards. You know, the one that is most popular, this, uh, that, uh, one of the popular ones was the recent one in 2021, December, where he was given a literature award for journalistic excellence. He has uh, references and biographies in in many books, and he has been able to sustain modern art in Nigeria, in reference to nationalist tendencies uh, that, that we all started from. And so it is um, my honor to be part and parcel of those who can speak about this gentleman, you know, very creative personality, a very moral, you know, and upright person who took art as his major endeavor and allowed his family to join him in the, in the discipline. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that uh, is a good way to set us off on this uh, journey on, in this panel. Uh, you've just given us a very good view of uh, Ajiboye's career. And uh, well, I'm sure if there are questions, as I assume there would be uh, for you, uh, they will come. Uh, after the third presenter, uh, after the third presentation. So uh, thank you. And I want to apologize for using Kainde instead of Kunle as your name. Uh, of course, I know you very well. Yes. But when I saw the list, they put that Kainde there. And I just, out of an abundance of caution, I wanted to follow what the organizers sent to me. I so know. I sincerely apologize. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, we will go on to the next presenter, uh, whom I'm sure I believe is uh, Stephen Folaromi. Yes, uh, yeah, um, good afternoon. Um, it's actually a privilege to also be on this panel, uh, particularly with uh, um, two of my seniors and uh, Grades from uh, Ife. Um, yeah, it's um, to talk about Josie Ajibo is like to talk about a, a father figure, uh, particularly to me, and per, uh, perhaps many other people. So uh, I've been privileged to uh, watch Josie Ajibo while I was a kid myself. Um, I grew up partly in Idioro in Lagos, and then uh, my parents we moved sometimes to Buddy Thomas and then later Fadi. Uh, unknown to me at that period of time, I didn't even know that uh, Josie was living quite around Mushi area. Um, sometimes in, 19, in the 1990s, myself and Josie's son, Shebu, uh, a, a good friend of mine, met at the Yaba uh, College of Technology and then later at Obafemi Awolo. University. There we struck uh, um, quite a good friendship, not only with his son, the siblings, um, Rotimi, 
YMC and uh, Ronke, and later the in-laws as it would be. Uh, and over the period of years, um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, informal discussions as to uh, Josie's practices. Josie is uh, such an outspoken person. Um, you can sit down with, with him and spend the whole day in speaking a whole about what you must practice, what you must do, how we must act in school, advising us. And most times when we go on holidays <clears throat> back home, and I mean, he keeps on telling us how we need to practice as artists and so on and so forth. And it brings out references. Uh, so in my previous title, you see Yossi Ajiboye's Women, uh, Advocacy, um, References, and so on. I'm, I'm still playing around uh, the title. And I must say that um, uh, it's an ongoing work. In fact, I, I could say that I've not scratched the surface of exactly uh, one of the things I'm probing at in, in, Josie's, um, in Josie's work. But my proximity with the family over the years um, uh, keyed me into certain aspect of his works that I've been thinking about. Um, at first, um, a few years back, I think maybe 2017, there was an exhibition, Josie and us or so. Uh, and I began to wonder then, I mean, I felt that why would they just have an exhibition, Josie and Sons? Why would they leave Ronke and YMC out of this uh, equation? Um, that's a question, that was a question on my mind. Of course, I wasn't fighting that anyway. Uh, why would they leave mommy out of this? Um, and I began to think about the whole lot of things when we leave out um, women folk sometimes out of um, um, artistic discourses in politics and so on and so forth. Um, a few months back, the Nigerian Senate uh, struck down a bill uh, to, uh, to discuss the affirmative action in uh, political part participation in the Nigerian circle. And, and I began to think about the whole of this um, issue. But back to Jussi um, Ajibwe. So when I'm, I'm asking um, uh, questions, I mean, and of course, um, Dr. Filani had already mentioned Josie being a very iconic artist. I mean, we can talk and talk about him. Uh, and I've also mentioned my friendship with um, Josie Ajibwe and then the household. Uh, by the way, um, uh, all of them went to Ife. I actually also taught um, EMC, I mean, uh, Ronke in school. We lived under the same roof in certain instances. So I've had that inroad, seen them, seen photographs of some of the materials you see uses for his paintings. So I begin to think, I mean, where does he, I mean, who are Josiah Ajibo's models? Where does his references that he uses for these materials, either in cartoon and in painting, come from? What is his relationship with uh, these women? Um, in some of, one of my discussion is a, an erudite scholar, like a father figure also, uh, and I'll mention his name, Jelly Jagede, we were discussing a while ago, and he, and he asked me what I was working on now. I said, yeah, I've been thinking about something for a while, and it's Josiah Jibwe's women. And he, I mean, of course, you know him. Uh, he just laughed and said, ah, Steve, if you see what do you mean by Josiah Jibwe's women? I said, well, when I get to the bridge, I'll cross it. But actually, I mean, I was just looking at those images. Uh, who did Josiah Jibwe use for his models? Uh, the graceful images that shows in quite a number of uh, works that he has uh, uh, painted over the over several uh, years. And if you note, Josie have actually painted more female figures in his work. Um, we're still trying to count uh, in his works than the, the male folk. And uh, one of the things Josie will tell you is that um, in Nigeria, especially among the Yoruba, that women are quite fashionable. Men can be fashionable, but women are quite fashionable. And so they display that cultural aspect of uh, our society in dressing, in the daily activities. They are graceful, they are our mothers and so on. So he finds in those, uh, in, in women, that attributes that he enjoys and find able to push out as his artistic uh, 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 ingenuity uh, and skill. And, and those are the things I'm, I'm trying to ask uh, about um, Josie's uh, women said, so what is the interest of Josie in the representation of women? And I've mentioned one of them about the, 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 the fashionistic aspect of women, um, being able to display 
um, beautiful attires, gracefulness, either in the market, either carrying milk on their head if it's a Fulani woman or a woman breastfeeding and so on and so forth. Um, could we also look at um, women in Josi as work, as examined by works of other famous artists? I was reading an article recently, um, you see that uh, uh, talk about artists such as uh, Pablo Picasso. I mean, mentions have been made about several models that uh, some of these artists use. And sometimes they, their relationship with those uh, uh, women. And in fact, there's a quote that was talking about the way and manner those women are talked about. I mean, can we change the narratives of how we speak about those models and how important those models were in the works of these artists who became quite very, very famous. Uh, if those women were not part of what he was painting, could he have been that famous? So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm asking those, uh, asking those uh, questions. And what can we learn uh, from the depiction of these women and the messages uh, that Josie Ajibo is expressing in his paintings and his uh, uh, cartoon? So uh, in his cartoons, you, you see uh, this one here that's titled the uh, Valentina. Um, why must I call your child Valentina? Wasn't she the result of your last year's Valentine date? I mean, so uh, you see, he's trying to show us something here. One other side of uh, his representation of women, um, which might not go along with the other narratives that I've talked about. I mean, to show that when certain effects happen, it affects uh, certain um, causes happen. It affects more the women for than perhaps it affects the uh, 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 the men. And so also when I talk about Josie Ajibo's women, um, I look at these uh, graceful women here. Um, first, this lovely, beautiful uh, wife, our mother. Uh, it's on the it's on the left here, and then um, here we see. Um, Oshundino Ajiboye, who is also an artist. I had a BA and an MFA in painting from Obafemi Law University. And then also Ronke Ajiboye, who is the last of the uh, Josie's uh, children. Uh, in between Shegun, uh, who was my uh, uh, friend, who is my friend and classmate, is wrote to me. I mean, I don't have his photograph here. Neither do I have Shegun. I have also skimmed them out of my discussion in here. So um, if, if I'm biased in that sense, Perhaps I will be forgiven, but I'm talking about the women now. So uh, these are some of the women that Josie have represented in his painting over time, and we shall see in one of these means. So if you look at this painting here, uh, definitely that is YMC. Uh, and if you've seen old photographs of YMC like I've seen, I, I know that that is, uh, uh, that is YMC. And so Josie Ajiboye uses his wife, uh, his two daughters, in a number of representation that he does. Uh, he also uses other, uh, other, other, other drawings, maybe perhaps some photographs or uh, references from hands or legs and so on and so forth in a number of his works. On the right here, you see the face of uh, Yonke Ronke, uh, who has now been turned to a Fulani girl, even though Ronke is, is Yoruba. Uh, but that's what Josie, uh, can do with its uh, representation and, uh, and its painting. Uh, there are several that I've identified that I've not yet I've not been able to identify um, over the course of my study in the last few years. Of course, uh, COVID and several travel restrictions have made it impossible for us to make visit make visits as uh, necessary as we want to. Um, yeah, uh, Jussie also says that many times also uh, he, he thinks about an idea. He walks over them over and over, making sketches, drawing references from family, friends, photographs, to put up uh, images that are not seen either from any photograph at the end of the day, but from his imaginative uh, uh, composition. So if you see a, a painting like this and you think that perhaps Josie has a model uh, somewhere, I mean, you might not uh, be speaking the truth, perhaps like uh, maybe Picasso and all of them. And one of the things Josie says is that, it's quite difficult in, in, in Nigeria to, to get that done. Um, many of us who went to school, uh, we can talk about uh, Maria in ABU Zaria. Uh, we might be able to talk about Titi that I got to know in OAU Ileife. I've forgotten the name of our model in Yabatek now, but I, I'm sure that uh, 
perhaps uh, Dr. Phil and might be able to also remember, maybe there was another model before TT in IFE. So many of us have not been uh, exposed to several models as um, sometimes you might find in the West, uh, perhaps because of the cultural uh, nature of our society and so on and so forth. So in that sense, Josie also creates these imaginative compositions of uh, women, unidentified women, uh, but it pre presents them to us in graceful manner, in one activity or the other to show uh, what we are, who we are, and who this uh, generally women do, do in our society. So for instance, on this image on the right here, uh, one of the things you talk about the breastfeeding, um, images like that have been used to uh, discuss issues of uh, the benefits of breastfeeding for young babies and, and their mothers. Uh, so in conclusion, um, I'm saying that, I mean, this, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to work so much uh, on, on the images of women in Josiah Ajibwe's uh, work. And I'm asking questions about, um, uh, we need to do much more. I mean, I need to do much more. With my proximity with Josiah Ajibwe, I feel that we haven't done so much uh, 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 with uh, the materials uh, that Josiah Ajibwe has in stock. Um, uh, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this erudite scholar asked me, I said, yeah, we should have done something about Josie. What are you guys thinking about in the present moment? And I felt quite very elated when this panel came on. I saw it and I said, wow, this is an opportunity to actually start doing something about Josie, um, uh, 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 Josie Ajibwe. And, uh, and that's particularly why I'm looking at the works of Josie Ajibwe. In the next um, couple of months, I will be collecting much more materials and to discuss um, Josia Jibwe's uh, women and several other pictures to compare photographic images that he has collected and the eventual paintings that have been used in those uh, uh, works. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for allowing me. If you notice, I've just been calling oh. everyone by name. I've not used doctor in any way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> so I remember my your me or not, so I hope yeah. no one take offense at no, that. No, 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 I'm Stephen Falaram as well. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you, it's quite fascinating. Yeah, thank and you. if you were in trouble with uh, Dr. Dele Jagede, my quest, when we get to the question, uh, question and answer <laughs> of the panel, we'll put you in more trouble. <laughs> so, but, uh, thank you so uh, much. <laughs> Presentation will be a joint one, as I indicated earlier. It will be by Adedola Olayinka Adeyemi and Afiz, Afiz Babatunde Shinyobola, both from Olabisi uh, Onobanjo University. Uh, please proceed. Uh, the floor or the screen, as we will say today, is yours. Hello, are they presenting or? I am not sure they are present. I thought I saw one of the two presenters on the list on the roster, but let me just check just a few seconds, please, to check with the organizers. Oh, well, I don't know what's going on, uh, but then Maybe we could just use the time uh, to ask questions if there are questions from members of the audience uh, so that we don't just wait. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any questions from the attendees first, please? On the two presentations?
I'm trying to see the chat to see if there are questions there. There is none. Okay. Any questions? Well, in the interim, I will just uh, go on to uh, Stephen Folaromi's presentation. Okay. Since I have been waiting <laughs> for <laughs> anyway, and uh, we'll see if the third presentation will be ready by then. And if not, we would know we will be having an early exit. Time. Exactly. Early exit, exactly. Uh, you know, Josie Ajiboye had another woman outside. So <laughs> I want to problematize your presentation. Okay. Uh, Ajiboye's professional career started in 1962 uh, with the Niger Challenge Press, yes. uh, a publication unit, as uh, uh, Dr. pointed out, of the Sudan Interior Mission. Yes. And as was the practice at that time, he initially served for five years as a trainee artist under the supervision of one Miss Thompson. Yes. So that the <laughs> woman outside <laughs> yeah. Thompson had come from Kent, England. Yeah. Before uh he was, before Ajiboy was fully engaged as a designer illustrator. Yeah. Uh it was Miss Thompson, whom Ajiboye fondly refers to as my missionary mother. mother. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Who gave yes. him tremendous confidence. Yes. Uh, she said at that time, is, it, Ajiboye said at that time, Miss Thompson used to bring from London magazines like Punch, which had great impact on him with all its satire and funny cartoons. Yeah. So that is one woman outside that should be included, included. in the yeah. Ajiboye's women. That's, that's, that's quite correct. Uh, that's quite correct. Um, uh, as I said um, earlier, I, I think I, I collected uh, a few more photographs that I'm still working on if I can share. <laughs> yeah, one file here. Uh, can you see the screen here? Yes, I, mean, I can this see. This is an old photograph of uh, Josia Jiboye and uh, Mama Jiboye and uh, Shegun held in, mm -hmm. their, in, their, in, their, in their hands. Uh, in their hands. And, and these are women from the Sudan missionary, uh, Sudan missionary. Um, uh, so uh, mm -hmm. one of the things I can say also about Josia Jiboye is that um, you know, like as a father to me, I mean, it's quite it's quite similar to my own biological father as well. They are quite conservative. I mean, sometimes if you tell Josie that we need to do, you can sit down with daddy for for hours and argue that out uh, before you can concede that this must happen. In fact, the girls will tell me that, ah, Uncle Steve, I'm going to tell about daddy's <laughs> But, um, I think we just learned to uh, be tenacious as well to get those things out. In my last visit to him, I told him that we need to get these documents. We need to scan them. We need to sit you down and then tell us about each one of these um, people. And uh, to see that you have a, a house with full of uh, archival materials like that, and uh, we only have to wait to visit them in little to manner, stuck in. He knows where he keeps everything. But, mm -hmm. Uh, it's something that I think that we need to we need to get out and uh, and, uh, and 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 see. And uh, if you look at this, I mean, I think it was also given this this Bible that was handwritten uh, by uh, by the same uh, by people in Sudan mission and and, and these other photographs. So let me just stop there. But I I really appreciate uh, that question, and it's something that I should look towards uh, and include in my in my in my in my study. Uh, hopefully that before by the end by the time I finish, um, yeah, it will make for uh, a good presentation. But I'm still thinking. I, I'm still thinking about 
that book that um, Dele Jigede mentioned that I, and I wouldn't mind I mean, as a panel, I don't know what um, um, Yomiola is thinking about, if we could do something in, in, that, in that light, uh, especially since you've also worked with um, worked alongside with him at uh, daily time sometimes in the past and so on. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, yes that, that would be a great idea. And uh, we could always explore that uh, or discuss that some, in some more uh, details later. Yeah, uh, so um, before I thought there was a question in the chat, which yeah. I will come to, but let's see. I'm trying to okay. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, the first question is uh, which themes or subjects does Josie think are his most important? And this will be question for any of the two presenters. Uh, perhaps I can I can go first since I, I was thinking. Um, uh, I've only had most of the time when we have I've not sat down to have interview with uh, Josie while I'm writing and keeping the most of the times we have these several informal discussions that can run into ours. Uh, unfortunately, also as he, as the next questions we talk about, is there anyone scanning his cartoons and whatever? I mean, and I and I agree to the fact that perhaps. We is sons who call our, ourselves part of like his sons. Perhaps we've not done enough, um, enough um, to uh, do the kind of um, documentations that, that is needed. I mean, scanning all those materials and recording um, sessions that we've had, uh, we've had with him. Uh, for me, he, uh, he doesn't particularly say uh, this is what is important to him, but he says that whatever you do, do it well. I mean, let it be said that okay, yeah. When he was cartooning, I mean, he he he, he looked at issues and addresses those um, issues. Uh, there's one article written by I've forgotten the name now. We're talking about Josias the Egungu uh, in African arts, and talks about how he addresses political issues. He becomes the Egungu uh, that talks about issues behind the mask. Uh, and I mean, he's not afraid to uh, to do that. And uh, because of that, he's, fell, he's fallen into um, some years, I mean, many years back where his passports were seized because he was supposed to travel. But because of his cartoon, uh, he, he couldn't travel because they felt that uh, this guy is somebody that we must, uh, we must stop. So I feel that Josie um, looked at several issues, whether in his paintings or in his uh, other things. But, one thing, I mean, perhaps because I'm, maybe I'm biased now, what I'm looking at, but I know that if you look at his paintings, there are several images of women. And I think it's because he thinks women are important part of our lives in our society that needs to be um, uh, uh, celebrated. And, and that's one of the things I can say about this. Thank you. And if I could just add to that, I don't know if uh, Ebon Filani wants to say something maybe yeah, i would thank you very much i would just like to say that um, if you look critically at his um, themes um, you discover that as i you know mentioned the two areas where we where he found the expressions for his creativity um, his interest in cartooning is different from his interest in the paintings um, by the virtue of the fact that cartoon itself is supposed to satirize, you know, critically look at the society and they make people laugh. Um, his interest was mainly on social and political commentaries, you know, in his cartoonings. And we could relate to them because they were actual um, things happening in his own lifetime. They were contemporary things, you know, and he reacted to them, the social and the political problems, you know, by highlighting in a humorous manner, you know, some of those um, things. But when you look at his paintings, uh, because his paintings tended towards a hmm. Yeah. 
they are muted. So. Before we could say uh, somebody is um, a surrealist, there must be some romantic tendencies in such person. Um, however, what I could say is that he likes documenting nature. You could see some landscapes, you could see birds, animals that are painted with you know, very real, naturalistic, in fact, photorealistic um, tendencies, yes. you know? Um, so he, he loves nature. And as also noted, when um, Steve was talking, he referenced um, Francine that wrote something about the, yeah. the prank star, yes. you know? If you look at it, um, I also talked about the aesthetic, uh, I said um, cultural aesthetics, okay? When I was making my presentation. He was using archetypal images, of course. Mm -hmm. There was one of the pictures that Steve showed, you know, where the Bene or the regal lady was carrying Calabash. You see, if you look at the background, you see the pillar yes. post. Mm -hmm. So he, he creates entity of cultural images in his works, you know. However, because I saw him more like, um, Surrealist, yeah. you know, him himself is just opposing on unusual images yeah. together. Yeah, but you could still within it, and it's tied to. Uh, agree with me that is uh, is also very much kosher. In, uh, kosher. He has kosher in his uh, mind, and it's it's you know within the realm of the imaginative. Yeah, and uh, I, I. I think maybe some people, some stars, I will say, and I will play the devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, some scholars might uh, object to the use of surrealism as describing Ajiboye's work, not because it does not maybe be resemblance to that, but linking Ajiboye with the era of Salvador Dali and Co. Could just uh, in the first century here may just uh, make some people cringe. So there may need to be a, it has to be nuanced in the way that surrealism aspect is presented. And I understand what you mean, but some may not really that way. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you very much. I, I think I agree with you. I mean, despite the devil's advocate, but, um, you know, we, we must also ask the student of history, um, and it is important that artists are art historians, so they could know and reference their materials properly. Um, let me first of all say Josagbo is not isolated in surrealistic tendencies in contemporary Nigerian art. Abam Baba was one. Yes. And he, he even demonstrated more tendencies than the tendency of um, Josagbo. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, uh, there is a trajectory of historical references. Remember that um, uh, in spite of the renaissance um, naturalistic beauty, there was a resurgence, you know, by many artists decades after. In fact, the classicism and the, rom the romanticism we are talking about and classicism. Classicism was supposed to be what, was, what happened in the Greco-Roman era and they replicated it in the 19th century, 18th and 19th century, you know, taking cue from what, what they saw, especially in painting now, not in sculpture. So there is nothing uh, wrong for an artist to take historical um, style and interpret it in its own peculiar way. You, if you look at what Josiah Ajibo and um, Abang Baba did, they domesticated that surrealistic tendencies using as, uh, cultural aesthetics, using items from their own culture as archetypal symbols that people in their generation could relate with. So that explains um, the, the, the verbalization of that uh, surrealistic tendencies. Thank you. Absolutely, yes. You just the nail on the head there with Abayom Baba and maybe looking at Akionla Lashekon yeah. in the way Lashekon too painted. Yeah. Because 
most of Lashikon's paintings. Uh, one could actually even say Ajiboye is Lashikon's stylistic air, yeah. in a way, with the way he painted. He painted, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that would be a good way to really tread that needle of surrealism so that uh, some may just not be, may, may not misconstrue it as linking him to Salvador Dali, the man race, or the surrealist of uh, the Western world. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm. And I thought there was a question here from someone uh, who says, uh, from Catherine Baxter, I believe, who says, I will be interested to know whether Josie Ajiboye ever worked in a narrative comic form as opposed to humorous slash political cartooning? If not, is there a reason why he chose not to use this form? Any takers? Uh, what question was that? Uh, from Catherine Baxter asking if Jose Ajiboye ever worked in a narrative comic form as opposed oh. to humorous political cartooning. I am not aware. Maybe I should I'm go for it. Okay. I'm, I'm not aware. I'm also not aware of- Yeah, uh, I am aware that he ever did that. Uh, he has a compilation of his political cartoons in book series that have been published over the years. And uh, I have no recollection of him working in narrative comic form. And uh, if, if I'm saying no, that I've not seen him do that, the next logical question will be why, which I will feel maybe Ajiboye will be the will be better positioned to answer why. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have not seen that, but I'm thinking that um, perhaps if we, uh, because the Sudan missionary, um, uh, yeah, had a, a particular goal, perhaps if we revisit um, historically and chronologically, uh, we'll be able to see something that's similar, um, a story thread along the, of what was done at the Sudan missionary, because they, th those those um, events were geared towards uh, a particular goal, and uh, there seem to tend to be uh, some sequence in some of these uh, uh, messages. That I, I've not looked closely at that, but I, uh, but aside that, I am not aware of any. Well, yeah. um, I, I've not also seen, you know, series of cartoon strips, you know, made to reference um, characters, for example. Um, and I tend to think that the reason also is because oftentimes when you work as cartoonists in an organization, um, you, are, you are under content authority. People tell you, we want you to, we want this kind of idea. You know, um, can you try to do this for us? And more, more importantly, like I said, you know, I saw him as a realist cartoonist, somebody who is down to art that would not want to be tied to the apron of a series. You know, he reacts to whatever happens um, in his contemporary era. He, he daily reacts to them, you know? So such people don't like to be tied down with a character that they have to build up every time. That does not mean that, uh, for example, Dele Jagede also worked with um, newspaper, uh, but he had um, characters that he created and was using them as a humorous um, critical perspective to the social condition of the people also then. So I think it's a question of choice, you know? There was something I read, okay? Because some, we, all, we already mentioned that uh, Jose Ajiboye is a very calm, conservative person, you know? There was something I read that um, when he worked with Daily Times, uh, he just stayed for a, a brief period and decided to resign. Yeah. And the question was why? He said there was too much disorder, noise in the, in the uh, journalist room, you know, that kind of interaction where they had. Where he was coming from in the uh, uh, Sudanese um, 
um, evangelical mission, there was more order, you know? You want this, you take that. Uh, people take your bureau and pencil without asking you that, can I take it? So such a person is an organized you know, person who will want to follow a particular trend without diversifying into many things. I mean, we are all just taking, we are all um, just hazarding the guess anyway, which looks, uh, you know, um, which, which is possible, okay? So, but um, I believe that since he is going to react to whatever we have discussed today, he might be able to take that and explain better. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. And I am not sure we have uh, Jose Ajiboye yet online with us. I don't know if the organizers have a certain time when he's expected to come in to join us. So, but that's what I was told, that he will be the respondent in this panel. So we'll just that. Uh, and just to speak to uh, Josie Ajiboye's, uh, your, your, re your response, uh, uh, Josie Ajiboye would always come to the newsroom, then when I was at the Daily Times, bring his cartoon to the editor. And uh, you did uh, touch on the role of censorship at the Daily Times, right? I saw that in first person terms. Uh, Jose Ajiboye would bring the cartoon as the cartoon editor to the editor. The editor had to approve and it had to be published in what was called a first edition. In those days, for logistic reasons, first edition will go to the Northern parts of the country since Daily Times was a uh, cited or located in the South. So if there would be any cartoon that, or any material, news material, that would be problematic since Daily Times was likely controlled by the federal government, it will be withdrawn from the first edition. The second edition that will be published overnight would have a corrected version or maybe a version without that cartoon. So Jose worked under that con in, in that context. He was uh, a realist in that sense, right? And he was his sources, if I could speak to his sources, which I believe was one of the questions here, his sources or his favorite theme was about the masses, generally speaking. He addressed even or directed his criticisms of the government, despite working for a government controlled paper. He directed his criticisms of the government to the public through his focus on the plight of the masses. Josie would use public transportation, the mode uh, to really engage and see everything at the level or from the point of view of the masses. So I will just leave it there and we could go on and on. Uh, let me see if uh, they are bringing the big masquerade to us here yeah, to round this up, uh, let's see. Okay, uh, there's a message from Dr. Adeyemi Adedola uh, that he has been trying to connect, but he could not. So I don't know what the organizers would want us to do. I believe we still have about 20 minutes uh, during which we could continue to take questions and just uh, see what can be done to 
wait. <laughs> I don't know what the organizers want us to do. Um, yes. I think I thought, uh, I think in one of the communications that uh, uh, some of our uh, who might be in Nigeria could have uh, sent in the material so that um, issues with uh, network, I mean, issues with network can, can be problematic. Okay. Uh, I was commend, um, um, Dr. Kunle Fila, because I, I know that network can be quite, um, you spend a normal amount of money to, to get data. And sometimes the fact that you have the data doesn't mean that mm -hmm. you will be able to connect uh, quite quite well. So, um, and I mean, I saw this, uh, was it last year, June Akasa uh, conference as well, where colleagues from Nigeria really had, I mean, serious, um, uh, connecting connection issues. Um, there was a question um, by Franson. Okay. Yeah, um, asking, I'm interested in your paper on women, um, Josie Depit. Uh, you mentioned two overarching types of models, personal connections and unknown unidentifiable women. Those seem to end up uh, very differently. Uh, and I'm saying true. Um, yeah, mo most often things can happen. I mean, you could, they could both end up differently because you are using different types of models. And uh, when you're using different type of models, as an artist myself, uh, what you're looking for uh, might be different from using personal models and models that come from different places or imaginative uh, compositions. First, it might be that you, you want to paint um, a physiognomic uh, portrait of a person performing an activity where that person normally would not experience so, um, wrong in Fulani game. Um, we'll see that this is wrong care, but know that wrong care is not Fulani. Um, so we we'll see that resemblance, but at the same time, we we'll see um, the contrariness um, in the portrayal of the person. But we also see where Josie have decided to conjure, um, as uh, one of my lecturers used to say that, um, you have the artistic liberty. I mean, you can change, you can uh, remove uh, add uh, to bring out a different uh, personality of the image that you're trying to create so that uh, nobody says that it, that person is this person. But we can say, oh, it's a Yoruba woman or an Aousa woman. Uh, but the message is also passed, um, uh, passed across. Um, I, I think the additional question is, I'm curious if you can add a comment or two about his color um, palette. Well, Josie Ajiboye can be quite colorful. Uh, in his more recent painting, he's been much more colorful than in the previous past. Um, um, you see some very bright turquoise blue, uh, complementary compositions, which if you check his earlier years, were not, uh, were not that. Uh, his earliest paintings you see something in the mode of uh, when you're looking at um, maybe paintings of Rembrandt or Caravaggio, there's warmth about it, but there's a lot of use of ochres hues. But uh, I've seen some um, changes in the later years, especially from some exhibitions that he has at the National Council for Arts and Culture at the National Theatre Igomu Lagos. I saw some colors that um, initially, sometimes it's not very, very common with uh, Josie Ajiboye. So um, perhaps we can start thinking about um, maybe looking at his works from period to period. What was happening within those times to see what Josie was um, experimenting with new color palettes, or perhaps Josie is being influenced, perhaps with, with his sons and daughters who now paint differently in, in so many ways and so on and so forth. But, I think, uh, like I've mentioned also, there's still so many things about Josie Ajibwe that um, we have not actually sat down so well to think about, just like the questions that you talked about. I mean, I mean, I teach color. I could look at so many things about Josie's um, uh, color palette uh, and so on. But uh, thank you for, for that questions actually.
any other questions or any other thoughts? Uh, it seems uh, we would have to be rounding up as it appears that uh, we are not hearing from Josie Ajiboye or our third uh, set of centers. Let me try and see. Is it Which possible you... to call Josie Ajiboye? Uh, no pick up. I was trying to call just the edge of it. Oh, swinging again. Okay. Hello. Hello, Daddy. Hello. Yeah, Steve, long sorry, sir. Steve. Hello. Hello. Steve, long sorry, sir. Da Daddy, sir. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I'll, uh, give me, give me a conference. Yeah, the move. I want to hear me see. I will come and connect. Uh, so I want your feedback. Okay. Um. Okay. Yeah. Che, I think Bobby Jay. Okay. Uh, there's somebody on the line whom I want to speak to you briefly. Tebagbo, uh, um, um, your Miola is on the line. Yeah, can you? Hello, hello, Ogajosi. Fine, oh, good afternoon. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah. Ma, ma akote. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess the, the network, network is uh, pretty bad. Um, yes, yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Understandable. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, okay. Well, um, uh, just to round up, uh, since there are no more questions, let's see. It seems there's a question here. Are there any current courses being taught on the history of Nigerian cartooning at the universities? Uh, I don't know if the universities in Africa or universities in the United States. Um, I know that um, there's um, in graphics at Obafemiolo University, I, I know that there's um, cartooning and illustration as a course. Yep. Uh, and with that, I think they teach um, some theoretical aspects of, um, of, that, of that part. And I know that in the last few years or so, I've known about one or two pieces or so that dwells on um, uh, cartooning. I, there, was a, there was a student who worked on the of uh, Aso Wata. Um, and I know others who have done something like that. 
I know there's also Dr. Uh, um, Jim Organi, Jim Ga, who's uh, PhD mm -hmm. is also looked at um, aspects of uh, cartooning in Nigeria, South Africa, and I think one African uh, country as well. So in that view, maybe uh, because I'm not in that field, uh, I might not know so much, really, but I know that certain things are taught about um, cartoon. Uh, the depth at which it is um, uh, looked at, it's what I cannot tell, but I, I, I'm sure that's taught. Yeah. And of course, I see the question uh, just posed now about taking a seminar with me in Nigerian cartooning. I do not have any seminar on that topic. Uh, I teach a course on satires in African and African diaspora arts at Spelman. But then it is not a seminar. Mm -hmm. It is just an undergraduate course. So I don't know if uh, that meets uh, the requirements of uh, the person asking the question. Uh, let's see. Any more questions or any more thoughts? I was just thinking while you were speaking, Stephen, and uh, it's so your paper has several possibilities and okay. uh, to open up a broad array of Ajiboye's work. Even if broadly looking at Jose Ajiboye's women, women at home and the women outside or okay. women in the real world and the women within the frame of the cartoon yeah. or painting canvas. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, thank you so much, yeah. Because uh, the question about color, for instance, could even be addressed in literal and metaphoric terms. He mm. had this ability to give a broad array of colorful figures, even when he was cartooning in black on right. paper. He yeah. would always show the wayward women. He yes. would always show the faithful, committed, devoted wife at home the wife of the politician that would stay and tend to things at home. And it would always show where what men do, who will be looking at a woman while driving and it be lamppost. <laughs> so there are various ways you could always use this looking at, because since you have a you have a, an unusually nice view of Josie Ajiboye's life in person, in terms of your relations with him. You could leverage that to this yes. end. Look at the personal and the personal yes. aspect. Look at the and the imagined aspect. As Dr. Filani has given us a view of Josie as the realist, yes. you see what imagined community, what imagined life he has given us in cartoons and in paintings. Yes. So it has a lot of possibilities. And uh, it's, I, see a, I, see it, uh, I see the prospects here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Any thoughts? Let's see. There's one more before we round up because we have been have been told that the session is less than 15 minutes. Okay. Nope. No, 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 no. <clears throat> so uh there are no thoughts from me. I don't know if Dr. Filani or Dr. Folarami wants to provide any thoughts or if they have any questions as we close this out. Um, thank you very much, um, 
not much as any thought relating to the um, theme of the conference, but more to the, you know, organization. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I would have thought Judge Wei would have been, at least would have loved to listen to what people say about him. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I would have loved that his children also joined this um, um, conference by Zoom, wherever they are, which I don't think they are, I don't think they are present. Mm. Uh, um, and uh, I mean, some things like that should be corrected. Is yes. it lack of information? Uh, because for me, I receive regular information from LSC. Yes. In fact, almost to a burdensome tendency. So I would believe that they should have done, they would have done that to others. And um, one way or the other, even if we are not going to participate, we should be able to send advance notice so that people will know that we have X issue that will not allow us to attend. This is a very big um, location for you, Sajibwe. Yes. It's very, very big. And um, I, I didn't really like the way, I mean, that he couldn't be part and parcel of this to elucidate on certain issues, give his own opinion, whether we agree or not, and we can yes. have a more diverse interpretation of his uh, Hoover. Thank you, sir. Yeah, those are very valid concerns. And I just, I would echo what you've just said, Dr. Filani, uh, that the organizers should, uh, would have to do better here. Uh, we understand the constraints of network uh, connection from Nigeria, but then uh, if, uh, this is such an important panel celebrating the life and artistic career of an icon. It should have been, some things should have been put in place to ensure his presence. I agree with you. Uh, Dr. I, I also, I also um, agree, uh, actually, I feel as if um, um, I've always been saying that, I mean, if we, if we could give ourselves a knock, I mean, for somebody like me, perhaps we could have um, done so much. But I, I can, what I can say is that I actually came to Nigeria and I arrived back South Africa actually this afternoon. Um, yeah, it's, it, was, it was a long journey. I, I thought I would be, uh, the se this session, the, the program being common time, the final session being common time. And I also had to go for another uh, conference from, from Monday. So I had to get back here so that I can go back for the other one. So my thought was, like, was that uh, we should have found a way to get a proper network or get um, Baba Josi out of the house in uh, Itire to a place, to a location where network was quite um, okay. I mean, but I got in quite an hour or so uh, uh, into the house and I just quickly had to set up my system so that I can join, uh, join in on time. Uh, but uh, be that as is me, I think um, perhaps the organizers should have thought about it. Also. And I guess maybe one of the other thing was that this conference was supposed to be live and at the last moment was turned to uh, a virtual uh, meeting. I guess that created some sort of bottleneck um, for how perhaps the thought will be, you'll see will be brought to Unilag where uh, things could then happen and set up like, like, like that. So while I'm not um, holding forth for the organizers, but I think maybe that's, that was the issue. And um, I hope maybe in the near future, um, we could do something much more uh, better uh, with Josie Ajibwe. Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't be more grateful and appreciative of the uh, depth, the breadth and depth of presentations by the two presentations today and the uh, way you've uh, responded to questions from the audience. Uh, I will just uh, end this proceeding by saying thank you to the audience too. Uh, and I'm getting a message from Dr. Adebola here, Adedola here, uh, who says he's looking at everyone and here from you, but I can't part of the session. Oh. It pains 
it pains us too. We are, we regret that you could not make it, but then uh, hopefully in the near future, we will still be able to connect in uh, an intellectual forum like this. I, I think maybe, I think maybe um, the link that Adebola mm -hmm. is using was a link from the final program. Okay. Yeah, could you confirm that if you're using the link from the final program, you will not be able to join as a participant. You need to join with the link okay. of the email that was sent by uh, as uh, oh, uh, NH, mm -hmm. NH panel. That's the link with which you needed to have joined. Well, we have just less five than minutes. five minutes. So, so uh, we couldn't, uh, yeah. yeah, just it to, was nice you <laughs> to begin to pursue that now. Okay, yeah. Uh, Thank you, and hopefully we'll still connect. Uh, Dr. Filani, thank you. Dr. Folaromi, thank you. I wish you all the best. It, thank you very it, much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I'm informed by, by the way you conducted the, the program. I mean, it shows maturity, and I hope um, you are still painting with that your economy of means um, articulation on board. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, it's a pleasure. Steve, yeah. nice seeing you. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir. You know? <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great day. Yeah. yeah. Thank Bye. you very much. Yes. Good double. Good double.